Hello and welcome. In this video, I want to show you some examples of finding limits using the squeeze or sandwich theorem. The first question is limit of sine x over x as x goes to infinity. We want to find this limit using the squeeze theorem. Note that with direct substitution, we cannot find this limit because when x approaches infinity, sine of infinity doesn't exist. We know that sine and cosine functions are oscillating between negative 1 and 1. They are periodic functions like this. Their maximum is 1, their minimum is negative 1. And they oscillate between negative 1 and 1. So, by direct substitution, we cannot find this limit. So, for finding this limit, we use the squeeze or sandwich theorem. If you remember the squeeze theorem or sandwich theorem, for finding limits involving trig functions like sine or cosine, we start with the trig part of the limit. So, we start with sine x. And we know that, in general, sine x and cosine x are always between negative 1 and 1. They oscillate between negative 1 and 1. And it doesn't matter what is the angle that is here. Sine of any angle and cosine of any angle, sine of any variable here, is always between negative 1 and 1. It doesn't matter x approaches what, x approaches infinity or any other number sine and cosine are always between negative 1 and 1. Now with the help of these inequalities, we can use the squeeze theorem or sandwich theorem. But note that right now we have sine x between negative 1 and 1. We want to find this limit, so we have to try to convert this to this expression. What is the difference between sine x and sine x over x? the denominator. So, we have to divide both sides of this inequality that here we have by x to convert it to sine x over x. So, we divide both sides of this relation. We divide the middle term and the left side and the right side by x because we want to have sine x over x in the middle as the middle function. So, by dividing by x, we have negative 1 over x is less than equal sine x over x, and in the right, we have 1 over x. Now note that limit of the left function and limit of the right function, when x approaches infinity, because this limit is limit at infinity, when x approaches infinity, what is limit of 1 over x? What is limit of negative 1 over x? Both of these limits are 0. Why these limits are 0? Why limit of 1 over x when x approaches infinity is 0? In numerator, we have a number. The denominator approaches infinity. So this fraction approaches 0. And also, the other limit is also zero, the limit of negative one over x, x approaches infinity is zero. Limit of any number over infinity is zero. So the limit of the left side and the right side of this inequality that here we have is zero. Now, based on the squeeze theorem, this middle limit, the limit of sine x over x, is also zero. Based on squeeze or sandwich theorem, we can conclude that limit of sine x over x when x approaches infinity is zero. If you remember, in the squeeze theorem or sandwich theorem, we, find, we have to find the limit of the left side and the right side of the inequality. 
if both of these limits exist and are equal to each other, then the limit of the middle function should be the same. This is the squeeze or sandwich theorem. The second example is this. We want to prove that limit of cosine to the 2x over x to the 2 plus 9 when x approaches infinity is 0. So we want to prove that limit of this function when x approaches infinity is 0. Again, similar to the previous example, we have to start with the trig part of the function. We have to start with the, from the cosine to the 2x. We know that any sine and cosine function are between negative 1 and 1. But note that here we have cosine to the 2. And when we have f any expression to the 2, we know that it can't be negative. Any positive number, any negative number, any expression raised to the 2 is always greater than 0. Never it can be less than 0. So here, instead of saying cosine to the 2 is between negative 1 and 1, we can say that cosine to the 2 is between 0 and 1, not negative 1 and 1. It's also right to say cosine to the 2 is between negative 1 and 1, but it's better to say cosine to the 2 is between 0 and 1. This way is better. But it's not wrong to say cosine to the 2 is between negative 1 and 1, but because it's always positive, so it's better to say this way. Now, again, similar to the previous example, similar to all of these type of questions, we have to try to make this middle function, this middle expression, similar to what we have here. What is the difference between these two? The difference is the denominator is x to the 2 plus 9. So, we have to divide both sides of this relation by x to the 2 plus 9. If we divide the middle function by x to the 2 plus 9, and also we divide the left expression by x to the 2 plus 9, and also the right one by x to the 2 plus 9, we would have something like this. Now, this middle function is trapped between these two simpler functions. We have to find limit of the left function and limit of the right function. This is how we do these type of questions. So first we want to find limit of the left function. What is limit of 0 over x2 plus 9 when x approaches infinity? 0 over x to the 2 plus 9 is basically 0. So this expression here is 0. So limit of 0 is also 0. So this limit is obviously 0. What is the other limit? What is limit of 1 over x to the 2 plus 9 when x approaches infinity? Again, we have a number in the numerator. And in the denominator, we have x to the 2 plus 9 and x approaches infinity. So the denominator becomes larger and larger and goes to infinity. And we know that when we have a number over infinity, the limit is 0. So this limit is also 0. Now based on the squeeze theorem or sandwich theorem from squeeze theorem, we can conclude that limit of the middle function, limit of x to cosine to the 2 over x to the 2 plus 9 is also 0. So now we can say limit of cosine to the 2 over x to the 2 plus 9 when x goes to infinity is 0. What was the question? Do you remember? Question was this, prove that limit of cosine to the 2 over x to the 2 plus 9 when x approaches infinity is 0. And we prove that it is true. Limit of cosine to the 2 over x to the 2 plus 9 is 0 when x approaches infinity. Let me show you one more example. The question is this, we want to find limit of e to the negative x 
cosine 2x when x approaches infinity. Again, note that you cannot find this limit by direct substitution. Because if you want to find limit of cosine 2x, because the argument, the angle here goes to infinity, cosine of infinity doesn't exist. So direct substitution doesn't work for finding this limit. For finding this limit, again, we use squeeze or sandwich theorem. We start from the trick part of the expression. Cosine 2x is always between negative 1 and 1. What is the next step? We have to try to convert this to this expression. What is the difference between this expression and this expression here? e to the negative x. So now we multiply both sides of this equation, both of the both sides of this inequality actually, by e to the negative x. We multiply the middle, the left, and the right by e to the negative x. Then we would have negative e to the negative x, e to the negative x, cosine 2x, and e to the negative 2x in the other side. e to the negative x, not 2x. Now we have to find limit of the left function and limit of the right function when x approaches infinity. This is the process of finding limits with the squeeze or sandwich theorem. What is limit of e to the negative x when x approaches infinity? When x approaches infinity, the exponent here is going to be negative infinity because x approaches infinity, negative x is going to be negative infinity. And if you remember, when we have exponential function which with base greater than 1, when the exponent goes to negative infinity, the exponential function is going to approach 0. Maybe you think how we know this. Remember graph of the function y equals e to the x. Remember graph of the function y equals e to the x. If you remember, a graph of e to the x is something like this. If you look at this graph, when x, when the exponent, the exponent here is x, when the exponent goes to negative infinity, attention, when x goes to negative infinity, the exponential function approaches to x-axis, approaches to zero, the y approaches zero. So, from the graph of exponential function e to the x, we can see that e to the power of negative infinity is zero. Attention, it's not right to write e to the negative infinity equals zero, because infinity, negative infinity and infinity are not numbers. So writing something like this is completely wrong mathematically. But for ourselves, we can think it this way, e to the negative infinity is zero. So, when the power approaches negative infinity, e to the negative infinity is zero. Also, it's good to know what is e to the positive infinity. I know we don't need that here, but it's good to know. If x approaches positive infinity, if we go far to the right, the y value of the exponential function goes to positive infinity. So, e to the power of infinity is infinity. But here we need the other one, e to the negative infinity is zero. So limit of the right function is zero. What about limit of the left function? Also, limit of negative e to the negative x when x approaches infinity is zero. Because again, limit of e to the negative x when x approaches infinity is 0 and negative of 0 is also 0. So limit of the left function and limit of the right function, both of them are 0. And now, based on the squeeze or sandwich theorem, we can conclude that from squeeze theorem, we can conclude that limit of e to the negative x cosine 2x 
as x goes to infinity is 0. I hope you like this video. If you like this video, please subscribe in my channel. See you in the next videos.